You are what you eat, both physically and spiritually. In the coming episodes, this dynamic podcast will focus on what we as people take into our physical body as well as our spiritual body. Scripture says that mankind shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4 4. Each episode is designed to wake up the called and shake up the dry bones scattered around the world for the purpose of opening the eye of what is taken into the physical and spiritual body. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Matthew 6, 22 and 23. Shalom, shalom, people. I'm Samson. I'm Marquis. Shalom, Mark. And man, to, to this episode, we got an awesome guest, Dr. Matt Wooten yes, on, on Iron Sharpens right. Iron to talk to us about this chitlin and his watermelon, man. or this chitterling and his watermelon. Doc, welcome, welcome. Hey, Tell the people Doc. who you be. Man, yo, appreciate y'all having me on, man. So, yeah, man, been looking forward to this, man. So, (laughs) Dr. Matt Wooten, uh, triple board certified physician in internal medicine, infectious diseases, and critical care. Um, So, critical care basically means I cover intensive care units. And then I have infectious disease consults I've seen hospital as well as um, half outpatient clinic. Um, But I also have a passion for wellness, nutrition. I'm actually... Um, kind of me and my wife are actually um, finishing our first book with plant-based recipes. Oh, and actually, nice. we plan on doing That's nutrition awesome. consultation. We want to get that started soon just because in my field, we see a lot of people with chronic illnesses. And, you know, a lot of times we can get people back to that chronic baseline state of health. But are we truly getting people back to a true state of health where your whole day is not revolved around going to doctor's appointments or to the pharmacy? That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, people, don't take this for granted. You sitting at the two, Black Street 2.0. You understand what I'm saying? This is how Tulsa, Oklahoma look. And this is how moving forward, all the states is going to look. Because mm-hmm. we're coming from the four corners of the world. And, and like we sure. stated before, this is a Christian-based, disciple of Christ, followers of Christ-based platform. Um, we stand on the foundation of Proverbs 27, 17, that states that as iron sharpens iron, so shall a brother sharpen the countenance of another brother. Mm-hmm. And that's what we stand on. So um, I don't know if you was tuned into last episode, uh, last two episodes of the series Chitlin in the Watermelon. Uh, the first episode, we spoke about the chitterling and how it was a diet of desecration, how something that was so... Uh, disdain and uh, known as an abomination to the enslaved our enslaved ancestors, which should have killed us, um, kept us alive. And one way it kept us alive is from the watermelon and how it's 92% water is a detoxification. And I think I listed a lot, nine top nine things from healthline.com mm-hmm. on the healthiness of the watermelon. Uh, but if you notice, I struggled uh, episode two. So me and Queese had to bring a doctor on there to uh, get our v- vernacular correct. So no. uh, <laughs> doc, y'all, had most, y'all had most of everything down <laughs> pack. I mean, yeah. Y'all I didn't even know what botulism people. was, doc. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So that's awesome, man. That's uh, awesome. So, Doc, um, real quick, uh, explain, you know, I've been doing this for 30 plus years, but explain the medical terms of what botulism is. And am I right or wrong when they say that Botox is botulism? Yeah, Botox is botulism. And so um, botulism, which comes from Clostridium botulinum, all right, 
which um, is similar to um, Clostridium tetani or tetanus. If you heard of tetanus, like when you had to go like get your tetanus shot or what's included in the D tap, which is included with two other things. Um, the D is diphtheria and then AP is the acellular pertussis. But yeah, tetanus. So basically tetanus and botulinum all come from the same genus, which is Clostridium. And so like Clostridium botulinum, which is botulism, is basically what can paralyze you. All right. And so they'll talk about some of some canned foods actually I had them kind of back in the day. Um, wow. There used to be yeah. some packages of like honey. Right. So some of the honey, um, depending on what brand it was, would have the botulinum toxin in it. And so there was a thing at one point in time where you couldn't actually give it to babies or young kids because they were more more susceptible to actually succumbing to having botulism. Wow. Um, cool. Like so honey. yeah, but that's but that's what they use in Botox because what happens is the Botox, what you want to do with Botox, you want to be able to stretch that skin, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so when you inject that botulinum toxin, was Botox is actually keeps the skin tight. Mm -hmm. So you you kind of neutralize, you know, all those forces that are, you know, basically trying to that creates the wrinkles. So you kind of keep it all stretched out. So before we get on the subject, and I'll just say this real quick. Um, being in the food industry for 30 plus years, if you ever see cans in the grocery store in your home that are um, out of shape, puffed up uh, packages that look like they're ballooned in air, that's a sign of botulism. Right. No way. No way. So. They tell you not to uh, buy dented cans or, or cans that's chipped. Uh, yeah. Is that because of that? Yes. Can, uh... yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like if, uh, if the... something expires, say like if uh, you buy a can of grocery, you buy a canned good, and you just leave it in the cabinet for five, six, seven years or something like that, and it starts bubbling or it's bent out of shape, that's a sign of botulism. Wow. So what's the correlation between that and uh, my wife told me that they use snake venom as a form of uh, tightening the skin when you see Botox. Is that true? I haven't come across that. Yeah, I don't Snake know about that. that. I'm, I'm, I'm not in, the, in all about all the stuff that's kind of in the dermatology kind of plastic surgery world. Um, so I haven't heard of snake venom being used. But like I said, Man. Botox, that's where it comes from. And I, I think the last episode I told Queer, we're we going to jump right into it, but it, it's interesting that Queer brought it up. But our last episode, we talked about, it was an episode of uh, Ellen DeGeneres. And she had Sandra Bullock as a guest. And mm -hmm. she was egging Sandra Bullock to tell her what's the new form of Botox. And she Sandra Bullock was reluctant. And she finally uh, got poked enough by Ellen. And she said that she started using this new thing called uh, baby foreskin. The foreskin of a baby penis after circumcision. I don't know if they liquefy it, but she used it to uh, tighten her skin. And I'm going to put this in... Um, uh, in the chat somehow, but yes. And I said, this is how uh, one of the ways abortion is popping and lucrative, you know, yeah. but it, man, that's another episode, but it's, wow. it's, it's crazy out here. Wow. But uh, doc, I don't want to assume to know uh, what you know about the chitterling and the watermelon. Uh, but if you want to um, give us your interpretation of what, what a chitterling is, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, the the audience would love to hear it. Our viewers would love to hear it. What is uh, your interpretation of oh a chitterling? Man, the, 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 said, have, have you had, chitter, he's, have you he's had any? Chitterlings. He's no, no I'm going to like so, so tell you what, man. It was so funny. <laughs> so, no, I've never had it. Now, I've smelt it a ton of times. So, the thing is, is that my usual encounter with it, which would only be once a year. So, like I said, I've never eaten it, but I've smelt it. And I usually smell it on average of once a year because every year my aunt and uncle that live in D.C. have a New Year's you know, how have had a New Year's celebration. And right. actually one of the reasons why New Year's is one of my favorite holidays because this is like probably the um, only time out of the year where actually, you know, a large portion of my family and then, you know, a lot of friends that my aunt and uncle have, we'll all get up. And it's now a stressful holiday, right? Because, <laughs> hey, you know, y'all meet up and then it's like, okay, you know, usually we'll be up there for New Year's Eve, hanging out with some other people. But then New Year's Day, we always had a big New Year's Day dinner. It was great. Mm -hmm. But, awesome. you know, both my aunt and uncle, you know, my aunt, you know, as my mom's sister from Charleston, South Carolina. So they down low country, South Carolina. Now, my mom never ate that stuff, you know, but my aunt, Dish. Okay, now my uncle's from Charlotte, <laughs> you know, and even though they've been living in D.C. since the late 60s, they, you know, every year, man, you know, they always got to have that crock pot and they always have chilling. So now my dad, right. 
my dad despises that. So like I said, my dad's a baby boomer like them, but my dad, he's very, um, he thinks outside of the box compared to a lot of people in that generation. So really and truly, me and he doesn't really seem like he's like a, your traditional baby boomer, right? <laughs> he does not. He doesn't subscribe to a lot of the traditional things, right? Particularly the diet, which I consider the slave diet of, you know, many American black people in the South. So right. the way he would, and this when, and so before I actually knew that there were chitterlings or chitlins, my dad would actually put an S, he would replace the C with an S. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's how I always knew. My dad that's always hilarious. said it. And so before I knew that there were chitterlings. <laughs> that's <laughs> hilarious. Like something that come out. And so that's oh, what that's my awesome. And so, and that's what my dad would call him. And my, my, my dad didn't even cuss like that. <laughs> that's, probably, that's probably like one of the few times a year where I can guarantee my dad's going to cuss. It's and it's that. It's accurate, though. <laughs> yeah, and because it's true, and it, it is, because they're oh, pig intestines. So they are wow. literally, <laughs> it's literally with an S yeah. in front of it. And so you kind of wonder, like, why in the world do you want to eat this stuff? And you know what? And like I said, for what I do, and this is why my wife and I kind of want to go along, you know, we kind of get into more like the plant-based eating and, you know, my wife's 100%, I'm about 90%. Now, look, I'll have some 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 wings. Publix has some good wings, all right? They had the margarita wings, which are pretty good. I'll tell her some margarita wings, though, for those, <laughs> and some salmon. How about it? Now, I can't really do red meat anymore because, and what you'll notice is that when you get away from all that stuff and then you try to reintroduce it, like your body goes haywire. Like, dairy you. can't do... Red meat, I can't do anymore. Like, I mean, I feel sick like the next day. So, um, but you call that's kind a of telltale wonder. sign, though, right, Doc? That yeah. if when you get away from it and you try to get it back, that's your body rejecting it, right? Right. I get even, um, so you know, I'm from the south, I'm from South Carolina, right? And you know, even my friends down south, you know, we have like, like a um, crab bro like area, mm -hmm. right? So you get all your Watch newspaper, it now. Watch it now. You get your crowd. <laughs> you see that, you you see see that your, background, bro. Yeah, hey man, <laughs> you see right there. So, right. so man, you get your newspaper, you get your your crab, you get your corn on cob, you get some of the um, smoked sausage, man, and oh, you get man. some boiled some potatoes, and you mix it up, and it's all good. But I remember, man, one of my frat brothers from college, um, he had some like summer before last. I just moved back down to South Carolina, and man, I remember I was cracking the crabs, eating it. Thought it was gonna be like good old times, right? And man, mm -hmm. I couldn't do it, man. That's the last time I'll ever eat crab, bro. That smell, man, yeah. got me so much. And I was like, I've been eating this since I was a kid. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Wow. And then now it's like, you know, because we made the changes in our diet in the past, like, three years. And it's like, there are things that, it even changes your sense of smell. And one of the things uh, also, when you talk about plant-based diet, uh, it changes your uh, your skin. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't have acne. It changes the smell of your um, defecation. Uh, yeah. and all those things they don't smell as wow. potent and stuff like that but I, I even wow. look at you right now and I see how freaking shiny and, and clear your skin is you know, that's just the melanin yeah, yeah. you know just right. the melanin hey, right. hey you know, you know I did take a shower before this, you know, I was cutting the grass earlier so I had to go cut the grass I had to go you know make sure I'm fresh for the podcast no doubt that's about. awesome and I, and I got my um I, I use this um uh this type of um body wash called bevel which I don't know if Nas still owns it Mm -hmm. But um, it's a black owned brand, but it's I me. Mean, it's so good as that. And then I got the lotion and I got the um the beard balm. And then, of course, I can oh, so you, you, you really full out uh, ethnocentric. Huh? Damn, man. <laughs> but man, it's still hey, looking good. I, I will say thank you. It, it's good. To no. see, hey, man. But, but, but seriously, those you notice like a lot of, you know, very explicit objective benefits. I'm kind of mm -hmm. going to a mostly plant-based diet. And like I said, I don't expect people to do it 100% because it's hard to do. But when you can eliminate things like dairy and sugar at minimum, and that's what we're really trying to get people to do because um, I've given a presentation to y'all, and this is what we want to do with our program, is that, you know, I think we've all been indoctrinated into a, you know, like how food really, we kind of treat food as, as kind of like a, um, where we have like a relationship of pleasure with it, which isn't healthy, right? Like Kui said, do you eat to live or live to eat? <laughs> a lot of people live and eat. Or, you know, I remember, man, um, I don't know if y'all remember, man, Michael Irvin had a show one time where um, he was basically, Jerry Jones came to him, and he's like, hey, I need you to find me. He was trying to find an extra play for the Cowboys. 
And he was talking to this one that. dude, and he was like, yo, you know, man, you eating for pleasure, man. You should be eating for a purpose. You know how Michael Irvin be all hyped up. He can still <laughs> yeah. use crack. You know, so he still be, like, <laughs> hyped up all the time. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, mm. no, man, you know, you got to eat. You got to eat for a purpose, not for pleasure. And so, but I it's true. That. And it, it is so true. And so that's where, you know, we're also bringing in that education. It's like, hey, man, you know, understanding, hey, how, how we've been indoctrinated, how we handle food. Like, you know. My dad would always say, he was like, you know, you know, it's like every event you go to, right? This always has to be food there. Mm-hmm. Like, it's got to be me. And, and why is that? It's an icebreaker. It's an icebreaker. And, uh, I think and, food is a natural aphrodisiac, right, Chef? If, if you think about it, well, certain isn't food are. open up in endorphins and, uh, and uh, make you relaxed? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, maybe that is, what uh... chitlins did. Did chitlins do that? Like, besides the heart disease, uh, what else was there any doc? Let me ask you this. Okay, was there any nutritional value in in eating any part of the pig, let alone the intestines? Man, I don't think so. I mean, you does know, it have it does is, it have any vitamin in it? Does it have any uh, mineral in it? Anything that's beneficial beneficial for the body? Right. That I mean, you can think that, of. And I can think, I mean, you know, like I said, this is all my opinion. I mean, you know, personally, like I said, if, and I can go based on too how our bodies are designed. Our bodies are more, you know, designed to be more so herbivores. Now we can make an argument for omnivores, but when we go to like our teeth structure, right? Yeah. So we look black at our structure of our teeth, it's more so for plants and vegetables, right? Because you have your incisors, you know, mainly the front of our teeth, our jaws, you need to go side to side. You know, mm-hmm. say for example, like a lion that's like a carnivore, all their teeth are like big, huge canines and molars, and their jaws don't go side to side. It's, it's also down. it's also an opinion right. that, uh, from a medical standpoint, it's also an opinion that we may be um, designed plant based because the first teeth that come in and our our front, you know, the front teeth, the front four teeth up top and up the bottom are the first two to come in, so they bite in the back too. And grind. Like Bugs Bunny and the carrot. <laughs> yeah, so. True, but then, but then, let me ask you: that, yeah. If that's true, Doc, if that's true, then uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The pancreas is what allows you to break down undigested meat. Correct. For back in the days where we couldn't yeah. maybe chew it all or digest it all, wasn't that the purpose of the pancreas? And that's why so, you can remove a pancreas and the person can still live. A, a life? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you know, um, so basically what allows you to break down all stuff is basically you have enzymes that are released by the stomach itself, which is the gastric acid. OK, mm-hmm. um, so that's kind of that's one thing. And then your pancreas works in conjunction with your stomach to release other enzymes to help you not just break down food, but also help you actually absorb it. So the thing is, what's important with the pancreas, your pancreas, may, you know, um, possesses insulin secreting cells. So mm-hmm. after you have that meal and you got like all this glucose that's in your system, your pancreas basically produces insulin so that now all that glucose that you've consumed can now be taken up by your cells and your tissues and your muscles and your organs. Oh. And that's uh, how a person become diabetic. So if they, uh, if they produce, if they don't produce, if they don't produce or they, the or they produce too much. Um, so, so this is what happens. So, like I said, there's two different types of diabetes, right? So, um, type one and type two. So, um, type one, which people typically have when they're like kids and when they're younger, it's just basically, it's more, and it's pretty much been described as autoimmune disease where basically your pancreas just doesn't have enough insulin producing cells. And that's it. Now, type two diabetes, which that's what most Americans have, is actually to the part which you mentioned, um, Cal, where you're, you're actually overproducing amount of insulin right because what happens is is that now your body has all this glucose it has this extra weight and fat and everything else and it's like okay it has a much larger surface area in order to try to you know digest all this food and break down all this fat whatever so what happens is that you actually in this phase where you over secrete too much insulin and then after a while your pancreas burns out and then you don't have any insulin and then so that's when you have to start doing insulin injections now and that form of diabetes can actually be reversed. And it could be reversed by pretty much losing weight and changing your diet. Wow. Because now your pancreas doesn't have to take on as much, you know, take as much of the stress on. It's like, oh, okay, well, now, you know, your pancreas is designed for someone that 
okay, weighs 180 pounds, but now when your pancreas has to take over a body of someone who weighs 450, 500, well, then that's a problem. And that's type two. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go deeper now, Doc. Quiz, I'm going to go deeper now. Let's take everything we said and apply it to the 1600s. So it's been said that the first uh, enslaved of our ancestors touched down in 1619. Let's say for 400 years, um, or let's say for at least 200, half that time, they had a straight diet of pig. What, what should they have had? They like should they have diabetes, high blood pressure? Should they have died early? How does that look? And why didn't they die? Too deep? I don't know. Oh, please, I thought you were okay. I can give uh I'll interject before you say something. Yeah. One of the main things, one of the main things. Is that food is not made the way it was back in the day. Crazy. And there were farming. You had your own land, basically, even, even if you were on a plantation or uh, a community, a black community or African-American communities, that and the other, everything was fresh. You, you know, farm raised, chicken, pig, cows, you name it. It was all farm raised. Groceries. Grocery stores didn't pop up until the 70s and 80s, which put everything in process. Mostly everything, if not if not almost everything, has some sort of chemical on it or in it. Mm -hmm. You know, even vegetables it's sprayed with uh, certain toxins and uh, what do you call them? Uh, it's pesticides and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why you have to watch vegetables most of the times and fruit. But everything is chemical based. We live in a chemical induced society and it's it's strapped directly to our food and what we eat so doc you can back me up on that if if i'm wrong then let me know what's no, up no yeah that's <laughs> spot on and that's really what it is and not just things now being processed um you know but also in terms of the amount that we eat right yeah, i mean yeah. it's, it's it's the volume so yeah. i believe even if someone for example, let's just make it a little more modern. I get, I would bet that even someone this day and time, if they just had McDonald's, right, not yeah. healthy at all, but if they didn't like overeat, they would probably still be, I mean, somebody okay because it's just the volume and the calories. Yeah. But you know, you think about even way back in that time, right? Where you know, like I said, things weren't processed. You're not eating a huge volume. And even if you're on plantation, I mean, remember, you know, coming over from Africa, you know, and especially, like I said, being down south, right? What's the thing that we know, man? Well, we love some rice. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of stars. I mean, yeah. well, you know, some rice. Hey, you you can't go wrong. And, you you know, you know how to, of course, like tomatoes, okra, um, and other, like I said, fruits, vegetables that you could actually cultivate <laughs> yourself. And so... I think that even back then where you didn't have all the, you know, advances of modern medicine, I mean, you still had people that lived, you know, well into the, you know, 70s, 80s, 80s 90s, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, even you go back to our, you know, probably like our grandparents, great grandparents, probably before that, you were like, yeah. despite all that, no modern medicine, they still lived today about 90, 100, worked in the fields, hard labor. <laughs> All right, right, but of course they didn't eat all that stuff. <laughs> but ac according to like uh science um and culinary, there's nothing healthy about the pig. Matter of fact, uh, we were told that there's a, a parasite in the pig yeah. that supposedly cannot die. And if we ingest that, um, more than likely we ingest in that parasite. It, so if there's nothing healthy about the pig. No matter how it's delicious, how man. we feed the pig. Have you ever right, tasted bacon? <laughs> <laughs> still, still tasting it. <laughs> I, I, I guess I'm getting off the fact that you know we had ancestors that I not only ate bad, but they worked from can't see to can't see. Um, yet for some reason they survived, and I guess that's where we transition into the watermelon, because mm -hmm. that's the only thing that I can uh 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 as you ever heard of cognitive dissonance yeah. it's the only thing that i can formulate that can uh counteract what the pig why the pig didn't kill us 
Well, and then and also it's... too, some something else also add to that too. Remember back then they were doing hard labor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you're doing most all that. Most of us have. Most wet. of us are sitting down. Working. Yeah, most like I said, most people's jobs now. You're sitting down. You're inside. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I mean, most people don't exercise, and so then you know you had no choice. So that's the other thing too is just that man, you working <laughs> it up from. I love how you said it. Can't see the can't see because can't see the can't see. <laughs> and so it's like yeah, you sweating out all that stuff. So it's just like uh, yeah, I okay. mean. Yeah, so that's okay. another thing too. So, but yeah, in terms of the pig, you know, I want to miss early. I can't think of any part of the pig that's good. I mean, or unless you have like, you know, the muscle. But I mean, even like you said, the whole pig is filled with parasites as well as pretty much any type of animal protein that you eat um, is going to have at some point. It's probably yeah. going to have some parasites because you think about where they live, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. even even seafood, right? Yeah, I mean, because most people think, you know, when I I laugh when people say, oh, well, you know, I don't eat land animals. You know, I'm like, I'm going to go out to the sea. Like, you think the sea is even safe. I'm like, you do know that these animals have the same bodily functions as animals on land. Like, it is like poison, that. right? <laughs> Was it, is it iron dye and poison in one of them? That's why yeah. I think me and Queese had a conversation. One of the 600 plus laws, I believe 611 laws, one of the laws our father told us not to do is not eat so much uh, or not eat crustacean at all. And we think it was because he was strict trying to be, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. But what if he was trying to protect us from iodine poisoning? Because there's no remedy for that if you catch iodine poisoning back in 3500 BC. You understand what I'm saying? So, <laughs> right. You know what? Like that's iodine poisoning for you. So, I'm I'm thinking the watermelon was the remedy to whatever poison that the pig was producing. Um, yeah. and I'm I'm thinking. Uh, so we got about ten minutes left. And Doc, if you can, uh, uh with your schedule, maybe you come back for another part to discuss the watermelon because the pig. Yeah. I, I think it's critical to talk about how we grew up. I mean, I grew up in New York where every corner store had a jar of pig feet, pickled pig feet. And I remember I remember my sister sitting down in front of a TV. Like I always pictured her watching Good Times with a newspaper on the floor, eating pig feet with hot sauce. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 why? Like, why would you? I mean, and, and think about pork rinds. Mm -hmm. Pork. I just fried, see it fried. It's fried. Why? You're why? frying fat. It's fried fat. Like why? why I've never. I tell you stuff? this. I've never seen a skinny person eat pork rinds. <laughs> I just said I. I never seen a skinny person eat pork, <laughs> I mean, and true. they taste so good. They taste so good. But like, uh, if nice and crunchy. Like, <laughs> like I was telling Quis one time. Um, I'm lactose intolerant, right? Me, me, and uh, dairy don't get along, and I'm fine with that. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made because there's no way I grew up on my mom breast milk or even formula, and then I transitioned to a cow's breast. That just don't make any sense to me. So I'm glad I'm lactose. But I think part of the reason that made me crave dairy, even though I knew it was adverse to my body, was I just found out I could have had a dairy parasite. Is that true? So a it's a parasite thing. that makes me crave dairy? Man, and this is why I'm so passionate about this. And then the presentation I gave y'all, like I said, it's in our package when, you know, people want to go for the nutrition consultation. We break this down because you think about it, right? There is no other species, right? No other mammalian species that consumes milk after infancy. It doesn't work that way, okay? And so think about it, right? If you ever thought about that, you know, even with the pandemic and any other, you know, disaster that we've had throughout the history of America, right? You know, the thing that we never run out of is milk. And you kind of think about it, right? You can go to any grocery store, any- you Run out of water, store. you run out of toilet paper. I remember going to the, st the stores and you can only buy like one- a, one package of uh toilet paper and you can only buy a certain amount of water you get all the milk you want it you got a variety of one percent low fat two percent reduced fat whole milk you Bro, know what i mean they, <laughs> there's no way that we got all these cows in the world to produce milk for every single grocery store in the city outside the city out in boondocks it does not work that so, way so what are you trying to say doc what, what is going on is that man i'm gonna tell you milk? what's going on man. so this is how they do it and think about it how the how is it that how you produce milk right well gotta come from the cow which is a which is the female you know bovine i think okay sure. right you, so you better hope it's it? a female no, sure. in order to in order to <laughs> Lactate to produce milk, you gotta lactate. In order to lactate, you gotta be pregnant. So think about it. They're pregnant their entire lives, right? So how do they do it? They get injected with all these hormones. 
to get all uh, so when you consume milk, hmm. you're ingesting all those hormones, which I believe is the number one, I think is the large cause of why a lot of people are getting like why you, you see 10 year old girls with fully developed oh. bodies. Yeah, <laughs> and again. And, and that doesn't make sense, right? Because it's hyperestrogen, right? And so what happens is, by well, I, I mean, you, I don't even know this now, but like people are getting cancer younger and younger. So, good I mean, question, Doc. Uh, huh? Keep going, but I want to ask this. So, yeah. when they a cow doesn't have to be pregnant, so they inject them with hormones to think to trick the body into thinking that they're pregnant, so they can produce milk. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know they that. do it to humans. Why, like, why you think there's a section of the alphabet people? who are injecting themselves with hormones that have male reproductive systems and lactating. Wow. But, Go ahead, Doc. I'm sorry. No, I just, no, no, I just no, wanted no, to be no, clear no, on that. It is. That's true. So then, you know, obviously you're injecting all those hormones. That's what I'm saying. I believe that's a huge cause. And like I said, this is my personal opinion. This is just not opinion of, you know, the medical field or my employer or whatever else. But this is me personally. This is why I personally believe is that you have all these high rates of cancer, um, breast cancer, prostate cancer, because, you know, particularly a lot of the animal protein we have because it's injected with all these hormones, right? And so, but going to cow's milk hormones, one thing, and then also, too, because of the field I work in infectious diseases, I think the reason why you have a huge rise of, you know, antibiotic resistance mm -hmm. is because, remember, these hormones have antibiotics. So there are, like, certain antibiotics that they give all these animals, right? That and so, and also they could produce more, produce more. And so what happens is when you eat the food or drink the milk, whatever, you're ingesting all those antibiotics, which essentially wipes out your intestinal floor. So we also know that your floor is basically your inherent bacteria. So we all have bacteria in our intestines that are inherent to us. So that allows the body to recognize what's us and what's foreign. So when something foreign comes in your body, your like an alarm system goes off, your body knows it's like, oh, okay, this isn't supposed to be here. Let's attack. <laughs> But what happens is when you wipe out your intestinal floor, your immune system doesn't have really any barometer to really go off of. So then it's like, it doesn't know. So then what happens is like antibiotics that would typically work against, you know, certain bacteria don't work anymore. So now you got to start using some more broad antibiotics to kill off certain bacteria uh, that- Referring to staph infection. Grow. Like that staph infection type thing where you just become- Immune to antibiotics type thing? Oh, um, yeah, really. The staff is not really an issue. I, I'm more so thinking um, some of your um, some of your intestinal um, bacteria, so like your E. coli, um, you know, I can start going through a whole bunch of them. E. coli is probably the most common one. Um, you know, you got Klebsiella, Serratia. I mean, I can go on and on that <laughs> already, you know, but I mean, E. coli, I submit, this is probably the most yeah, common Yeah, let, let me pull out my medical dictionary and like, try to spell this stuff. <laughs> Oh yeah. man, that is awesome. That is awesome. So but yeah, the, but those parasites are real. Like what y'all talking about? Those parasites are real because what happens is is that now you ingest it, and then you know the reason why you know certain people's like, hold on, I just ate like this big meal, I ate all this hearty food, and then you know it's like wow, you hungry like two, three hours later. Wow. <laughs> and because counters. that that par that parasite is in you eating up all the stuff wow. that you just ingested. Or so real quick, so real yeah. quick, I got about uh we got about three minutes left. So I remember um growing up, they used to say I had a tapeworm. And I see it in my son now where he eats, 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 eats. And it, it was like I was that age and I I would like just eat. I just had a big appetite. And they said, Boy, you got a tapeworm, boy, you got a tapeworm. Well, in 20 in 2020, I started making my own tea, uh, turmeric. Cayenne pepper, but prior to cayenne pepper, it was turmeric, black pepper, lemon, uh, mint, uh, raw honey, um, and uh, uh, what was the other one? Um, and ginger. So for about six months, I was making my own tea, and I, I, I already, uh, you know, had good bowel movement. I'm talking about twice a day, right? And that's good, right, Doc? Yeah, so I was, I had go <laughs> that's very good uh you know I thought you, you need to go once a day but if you go twice a day you, you yeah yeah I, got, I, now I had good bowel movements uh the tea just made it uh spectacular you know what I mean <laughs> but I lied to you not when I switched the ground pepper with cayenne pepper not to be lewd I defecated a worm you I said, didn't know what you I said you switched to black pepper I know I switched from uh black pepper to cayenne pepper and I noticed in, in three days from switching, I defecated a worm. Mm. 
Mm. And I didn't know what it was. And now I, I got nervous and I jumped up and went to my wife. It's like, yo, something just came out and it feel right. And it's weird. It looks weird. And she said, she showed me this earthy girl that she used to watch on YouTube that she eats air, whatever. But she showed me her. And this woman uh, did a, a chronicle of, or a tutorial how she went to uh, uh, detoxifying herself and wanted and uh, releasing worms out of her. And my wife said I had defecated a worm. So, Doc, my question is, how long was that worm in me? It's hard to say. It's been in there for a while. Because remember, man, like parasites, because it's, it's called parasite for a reason, right? So hmm. they live in all those, you know, kind of harsh environments. You know, and then, you know, remember, they multiply. So, you know, wow. you could have had some dead. Oh, my God. Some dead particles that you didn't even know. <laughs> wow. That was probably like the, that could have been the, <laughs> you know, that was the one that was. That, the was, that was the grandfather. The he still was, <laughs> that was the grandfather. <laughs> I'm saying, man, bro. You, you killed just, my that's teacher. That's the one that you saw to the eye. But, I mean, why, 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 there's why, why, some why? other ones that are probably, you know, that you wow. definitely gave it out that you didn't see. <laughs> So look, Doc, I'm hoping you could come back for uh, another episode when you're free. Uh, we only have a short time. We didn't even touch on the water, watermelon, but I, I, I'm, I'm thinking we're we not going to touch on it until we get you back. Uh, yeah. But this has been another episode of Iron Sharpens Iron. I'm Samson. Please. Doc, Go ahead, Doc. Special thanks, special thanks to how Doc. Yeah, yeah. Don't guess. thank him yet. He got to come back. Don't thank him oh, yet. Yeah. Can't <laughs> wait. Ready?